Harry's Wife, Part 77.6, Burgamy. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and I'm again providing you with analysis of Harry's wife with regard to video footage to aid your understanding of both her and narcissism. This piece of footage is the notorious men's health video, which sees Harry's wife, aspiring C-list, trying to move from the D-list actress, attempting to do sexy, prostituting herself for men's health by trying to demonstrate that she is for and sizzling like the burgers that she's a-flipping, which, of course, were it not for the fact that she'd managed to ensnare the Ginger Prince, is very well possibly where she might have ended up working, flipping those burgers, as opposed to living in a 27,000 toileted mansion in Monte Shitshow, telling the world how it should think. And, of course, this exemplifies the need for the narcissist to assert control in whatever way that can be done. And given her cadre of narcissist, the somaticism that she exhibits demonstrates that she will attempt to use sexy in an attempt to assert control and draw fuel. Here, she will do this to assert control over the unfortunate camera crew that have to witness this wooden acting, but also the viewers who would ultimately see this footage. And she'll be gaining thought fuel from the fact of supposedly uh, hundreds of thousands of rabid men all shooting their mayonnaise over her performance. Of course, most people probably watch this and think, she's nothing special, or more recently, what the fuck is all this about? But of course, at the time, being legend in her own lunchtime, she would believe that would be all these salivating men admiring her, lusting after her, and wanting her. And of course, that isn't the case. But it doesn't matter, because the narcissism will maintain that delusion in order to enable her to believe that she's gaining control, and of course, thinking about the fuel that would be on offer. Here it also demonstrates the hypocrisy of the narcissist. An individual who declares herself to be a feminist, looking for female empowerment, but goes around flaunting her sexuality. Now, of course, there'll be those who will say it's her sexuality she can flaunt it, and therefore that is a form of empowerment. But it doesn't really sit with the message that she has since been trying to provide to people. And, of course, it doesn't matter, because her narcissism compartmentalises what has gone on. It consigns this to the past, in fact forgets about it, and if it's brought up, her narcissism would regard it as a threat to control and she would just dismiss it, she would say, well, that was then, this is now, it's just one of those things that had to be done, or even, yes, I looked fantastic, didn't I? It was a really good day shooting, completely failing to understand the hypocrisy that's exhibited, because her narcissism will not allow her to do that, because it would allow her control to be threatened. So, Let's get down to the burgering and you can have a look for yourself and share your thoughts and comments about what you see. Apparently we're told that she's the ultimate guy's girl. I'm sure there's a lot of inward groaning. And of course, here she comes, coming out of the hood with all of the graffiti, with the shades on, looking around as if to say, I own this motherfucking place. Wanders out, attempting to look sassy, and yes, I think I will undo my hair, because that's what you always do when you're about to cook food. You let your hair down. Because every chef will tell you that's what happens. And out it comes, give it a wave. Oh, look at me. Why, Miss Jones, you're so beautiful. And that secretarial cliche of removing the glasses and the shake of the hair. And then we're treated to a close-up. Note the empty eyes. And now walk to camera. Looking sassy and sexy. Oh, yes, look at that. I'm showing you a bit of bra. You like that, don't you, lads? Absolutely fantastic. Fixed smile makes its appearance, and then some smouldering or attempts at smouldering looks. Removal of the jacket, shimming forth. Little look over the shoulder. Here I am on some kind of dilapidated roof garden. Clearly, men's health didn't think that the budget would stretch to having me flown out to some... Uh, glamorous rooftop in Dubai, but no, instead they've shunted me onto some dilapidated place, either in some either in down in some shitty area of Chicago or perhaps Dagenham in East London. Nobody thinks that highly of you, Harry's wife. 
because they basically put you on top of a crack den. And so she wanders along and off comes the jacket and now here comes the food. Yes, somebody, some poor minion, some runner for the production company has already started to sizzle those burgers. As along comes Harry's wife, she's put some different shades on now and we're treated to a bit of midriff as she apparently tantalisingly ties up the blouse. Off come the shades again. Lingering look to camera. You all want me, don't you, boys? Mmm, I'm so sexy. I bet you're all there going hubba hubba. And now I'll bite my lower lip because apparently that's what you do when you're trying to look sexy. Mmm, yes, that happens regularly. Flip of the burger. I think I'll sit down now. Have a look, look to the side. Flick my hair. Yes. Back looking towards the burger again. Oh, look at my flat stomach as I breathe in and hold it. And I'm really going to fuck you, Mr. Burger. Come on, Mr. Burger, I'm going to fuck your brains out. Do you think I'm sexy? Of course you do. Look at that. Look to camera. Look at my bottom, my pert posterior, as I continue to will these burgers to explode into orgasmic relief. Now smug look to self. Back to the burgers. A little chuckle as think about the fact that this is one day going to be Harry's balls that I'm grilling on here. And look, now I've got the burger and I'm taking a bite and I'm licking my finger and you're all thinking it's your penis. Isn't it marvellous? And look at me. I'm eating the burger. I'm still eating the burger and I'm moving my finger over my lips because I'm so goddamn hot and sexy. And there you are. There's the, there it is. Grilling never looks so hot. See? Everybody's told what that is. And then we, of course, get the quick plug, which is all about telling what apparel is being worn so that you can studiously avoid it and ensure that you don't fall into the trap of purchasing anything that would make you look similar to Harry's wife. So there's the footage. And as you can see, not only does it sit uncomfortably with all of the other matters that I mentioned early, it's an attempt to look particularly sexy, which fails. Knowing what you know about the fact that you're looking at an empty narcissist, you'll realise that all of this doesn't come from a place of innate sexiness, but it's all entirely manufactured. And of course, all of this is in front of a camera. And you all know that Harry's wife often seeks out the camera. Why? Well, basically, she knows that she's at a public event and her narcissism tells her, you can extend the reach of your control or rather it says in the unconscious, you can extend the reach of your control and gain more fuel by finding the camera and looking at it in some shape or form. And therefore her narcissism always causes her to hunt out the cameras at whatever event she's going. Whether it's a video camera or a photo lens from a camera, it causes her to do that in order to ensure that she can extend control over the largest group of people and engender the greater level of thought fuel. She doesn't think to herself, I'll find the camera so that'll enable me to assert more control and gain more fuel. She just simply does it instinctively, driven by her narcissism, and doesn't actually think about why she's doing it. She just does it. And of course, appearing in this was an attempt to bolster her presence in her career. Well, most people will do that. But of course, there's no thought for how it might pan out at a later juncture. For instance, those individuals who may live to regret the early production of amateur porn movies. Of course, here, she won't regret anything because her narcissism will just delete it from her mind thereafter. And as I mentioned earlier on, if she's challenged about it, she'll dismiss it, deflect from it and so forth. But it is a plastic behaviour that she's exhibiting. There is no inner sexiness. It's all entirely manufactured. And because she's mid-range, she doesn't do it particularly well either. But once again, another piece of video footage which is very interesting to watch, interesting to analyse, and sums up yet more about Harry's wife and her behaviour. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>